I remember. Thank you. <laughs> well, thanks everyone for, for coming today. Um, first, let me introduce the missions ministry team. Uh, Annis. And David's been kind of conscripted, although she's not really an official member, but a lot of our emphasis has obviously been on this effort, and so she's been a part of a lot of the meetings. Uh, Martha West, who is unable to be with us today, has joined us through Zoom links every meeting and has provided incredible insight, and much of the foundation of this presentation today was her, her thoughts. Uh, who am I overlooking? Tim. Tim Bonner is our um, steward. Steward, is that the right term? Yes, with steward. SLP. Yeah. And Rhonda has helped us in a number of times with uh, some meetings. So we're, we're, we're bringing this all together because we feel like we've, we didn't do the best of jobs at the uh, business meeting a few weeks ago. We wanted to have a little more time where we could present this in a little less uh formal capacity so we're going to do that today so i think we have a really unique and uh, exciting uh opportunity to, to show you today and some things we've been thinking about share some of those thoughts something that could eventually develop into a real long-term international mission focus for our congregation so um what we're going to do today is next slide uh, in keeping with the, the four W's, we, we're, we're doing three E's today. Uh, we're going to explain some of how we came to this point today, some of the thought process of, of how this all came about. We're going to try to do some education on, as I understand it, now you pronounce it not Amos, but Amos. Is that right? Spanish. Okay, Amos. But we'll try to change our terminology. Or Amos. 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 Um, try to do some education on their mission and why we were attracted to their what they're doing. And the third thing is to try to excite you about this possibility also to another e elicit your input into this process and what we're trying to do. So maybe we do have four E's. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Uh, Hannes will start us off with the explanation part of this. And really what we want to do is, is just to sort of Tell you about things we've heard and how we came to this. Um, for a long time, the congregation has really expressed a desire to have more of a mission focused effort. Um, we do local well. We feel like, you know, with the food pantry, both mobile and in person, we have Link, we have the Deacons Fund, which is now known as the Community Witness Fund. We have family promise. We need. We have um, a quarterly offering that we solicit for America for Christ. One great hour of sharing. The World Mission Office uh, offering and the RMMO, the RMO, the Retired Ministering Ministers offering. So we feel like we really do um, contribute a lot, you know, locally. And we contribute about $1,000 a month to ABC USA Mission as well. But then what happened was we received word of this very generous gift that we had received, the Wise Bailey gift. And we were given a charge, the missions team was given a charge by the SLT to determine what to do with the 10% tithe that we had decided uh, the SLT had decided that we needed to to really sort of show what we want others to do. So we discussed a lot of different options. We had a very long meeting one day and we said, you know, do we give this to a local group? Do we split up the money? I mean, it was it was a nice sum of money that we had to to think about. And we thought we could really split this up into several different ways. And um we decided really what we wanted to do is we wanted to direct the funds towards a single organization or a single focus. And because we thought if we could use this particular gift, one of the things that we know is that we are having um, a um, mortgage, uh, our mortgage is going to be looked at in the next few years. 
And we want to show people that if, in fact, we can get the mortgage paid off, we're going to have so much more money to do mission work that we thought this is going to be a great opportunity for us to show the, I hate to use a, a corporate term, but the ROI on our time. So um, we wanted to really see how we could use this gift, demonstrate the impact that the money could make within this single organization. After a long consideration and after um, a lot of discussion, we decided to go and work with Amos. And Amos, Dave is gonna talk about next and, and we're gonna talk to you, but the reason that we went with them was a couple of different reasons. First of all, they're a known entity. You know, we had a, a group that was going down to uh, Nicaragua uh, before the pandemic. And when the pandemic hit, we didn't know what was going to happen. So we just gave those funds directly to Amos and uh, realizing that that was going to be a, a, something that we thought would be a good use of that money. So, um, but we feel like that there's some really exciting things that can happen because of the partnership we can develop with them. They're a very unique organization and I'm excited about the opportunity to learn from them, not just what we can do for them, but what we can learn from them. So David, as she puts another spoonful into her mouth, I have never been a waitress, but here we go. I'm gonna turn it over to David at this point. Before we go there, let me let me just say how we are going to actually distribute the practical matters of how we we're sure. going to distribute mm -hmm. the tithe. So it, it amounted to twenty one thousand dollars. And we're going to distribute I think I got this right, one time donation this year of ten thousand dollars to the organization. And then we're going to make a three-year commitment to Christy Lafferty, who is a sponsored by the the board, the, the mission I am. I am in yeah, national it, ministries it, 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 to work with the organization almost. And Christy was here in this church. Right. She's yes. been here. She's and, been here. Right. And, and the gift was going to be six thousand this year, twenty five hundred for the next two years, with the idea that this would be ongoing. We we don't. We can't make the commitment beyond the funds that we currently have. But the idea would be this would be something we would sustain over time. So anyway, that's the practical Thank aspect you. of that. Let me to go to the next slide. Uh, so Amos, this is who is Amos? Um, they've been uh, in existence since 1967, I believe. Um, they weren't originally called Amos or Amos. I'm just going to say Amos. Yeah, just right. that. Um, uh, but they have been incorporated with them. So they've been in Nicaragua since 1967. So they have a long-term relationship and um, workings there. Their goal, as you can read, uh, they're, mo they're motivated by their Christian faith. They envision a world where health is for all people. And there's no child that dies from preventable diseases and the effect of it in empowering health care. Um, if you go and look at their uh, annual reports and stuff like that, they have gotten to the point that isn't it like 90% of children do not die now from treatable diseases. Astronomical uh, I mean, numbers. Most of those diseases were things like diarrhea, uh, malaria, malaria, just normal you know, well, I don't know, malaria is not normal for us, but in their area, it is. Um, and so and that's one of their things through there. Uh, if you want to go look, we'll have some uh, places where you can go and look up data and all that kind of stuff about them. Um, so Amos uh, empowers local people to learn um generic healthcare, uh, real simple. I mean, just they're not nurses, they're not doctors or anything like that. And then they go out into all of the little villages and they live there amongst the people to help with healthcare and hygiene and learning how to care for yourself to reduce all the issues of the uh, diseases that are around. Um, 
So that's one of their main focuses. And then of course they have a project every year um, uh, that they work with. And that's where our money is being donated. We got $10,000 as their project. Um, and so those change, those projects change a little bit every year. Um, uh, but their biggest one is their water uh, creating out of five gallon buckets, these uh, filtration water systems that they bring to the villages and every home that has one. Um, I mean, and they do many other things like teaching gardening and all those kind of things, the general things, but it's really to empower the people to be able to have a sustainable life where they're at and learning how to do that, to be healthy, to be happy, to be hopeful, um, and to be productive and proud of who they are and what they do and where they live and and um, all that kind of stuff. So that's basically what Amos is about. I mean, there's there's a whole bunch more. <laughs> I mean, there really is. They're a great organization. And we're still learning. We're still learning. And I think that's part of um, why the missions team chose them because they are established. They have a good track record. Um, and their mission statements and their their ideas and everything are in line with how we feel and believe. Um, so I think that based on that, what we got excited about was what, again, we could learn from Amos. You know, we can learn how to, they, they have this wonderful model of educating people and then taking them out into the community. That's what we've been doing with our local issues. You know, we've been taking link. We serve link. We do family promise. We do these kind of local missions. And so if we can go to the next slide, the, the, the partnership then is very simple to think about. Um, what does it look like now? You know, what does it look like? How can it evolve? And these are things that I think we really need your input on too, to really think about what can we do with Amos that we're not even thinking about? This is not going to be a one and done. David's not going to go down to Nicaragua. This is, first of all, not a, what was the, the term, the tourism? Um, missions tourism. Yeah, yeah this is not, not a mission tourism. tourism. Right. This is not what we're looking to do. It, uh, certainly, we want a long-term sustainable uh, mission partnership with them. We would love, I mean, Steve talked about in our, our missions meeting about what a great legacy we could create. You know, if we had a routine trip to Nicaragua that our young people would grow up hearing about and learning about and learning to be uh, from them so that they could go out into our own community and help. Tim Bonner got very excited about the possibilities of what we could do with the homeless, you know, with um, some of the, the things that we learn from uh, Amos. If you start thinking about that, you can envision a future where every three years we have different groups of people going down and learning and being educated about their processes. We're going to be able to help them out, of course, with funding and with sustaining their mission. But we're not looking at this as a one and done. We are looking at this as a long-term viable partnership for FBC Lawrence. And that, to me, is the, you know, I think about what happened with Dezo, you know, from Haiti. And and the the great things, you know, I love watching her on Facebook now with her kids and her husband and her congregation and realizing that we all had a part in that person's life. And what a great thing that was. But now we have an opportunity to go someplace and learn and be able to impact even more people's lives. And that to me was why I got excited about Amos. It, you know, um, I'm not even sure if, if I'll be one of the ones that goes on the mission trip. You know, that's that's not something I've ever even thought about, but um, I am thrilled to be able to send Deva and to learn more about what that might look like and to come back and help us form some ideas 
And I mean, it's all about exploring and getting excited and all in the name of Jesus Christ. I mean, it can't get any better than that. So. So what we would like to hear from you is what are your questions? What are your thoughts? Um, do you have concerns? Uh, we need your input to know whether you think this is viable. Can this be a long-term uh, partnership for our congregation? What thoughts do you have? Questions you have? Well, I'll throw in. Um, I like when Deva we just came a little bit late because I did hear you use the word empowering the people in Nicaragua. And I, just, really do. I just love that as a strategy. It's it's a strategy that all mission work should have, not to do things for people so much as empower them to do it for themselves. And I'm I'm seeing, sensing that that's just what this uh, ministry does down there. Yeah. And that's right on target. So yes. go go with it. <laughs> um, you know, I have talked to uh, Christy a little bit. I mean, we haven't delved into any of this yet because this is just all starting to transpire but um i did ask her about you know like some curriculum and stuff like that for things that they do if we could have that here to do some training here for our own people to go better serve the ministries we currently are serving um and, and maybe get some other people involved and excited about those ministries as well as um, the international ministries but the thought of going on a trip every three years, you know, it's just scheduled and planned. And this relationship isn't just about the trip. Yeah. Um, it's about the time in between where we're supporting each other and learning from each other. But um, just that idea of having that trip every three years, so you know it's coming. The kids can get excited about going once they're old enough. I, we haven't deemed any of that, any of that kind of information yet, his ages and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But and planning financially for those and, and stuff like that. And just being a presence and a, a regular presence in Nicaragua, as well as, you know, here. Raymond, go ahead. The government of Nicaragua and crime and is, is it safe to travel throughout Nicaragua relatively safe? I will defer. <laughs> yeah, Amos is pretty good about that. If things are really volatile in the government at the time that you're there, you stay on their compound um, in the city of Managua. Uh, but they're really aware of those kind of things. I mean, you, you're in a third world country. You're going to take a risk. I mean, you're just going to take a risk anytime you're doing that. Um, but for the most part, their organization is very safety conscious um and they they do a pretty good job of that i mean matt and kimberly have been there i mean it's been years but they've been there so yeah and more recently you mentioned days oh but uh first i was kind of saying missouri they're a has been there a few times uh leading up to the pandemic really it was maybe even the january right before and so it's there's their experience has been more recent and actually made the decision, Amos made the decision to not leave the compound because things were getting pretty volatile. This was leading up to some uh, elections. And so it was, it was pretty dangerous to, to spend a lot of time traveling around. And so they made the decision, there's plenty of work you can do here. And so they, they did that. And so they'll do that again if the, the need arises. What is the language? Spanish, which I don't know any of. <laughs> <laughs> when you say the compound, they have a central location in Managua, right? Yes. Right. And then most of the times on the trips, you're sent out for a long right. jeep ride into the rural. Up into the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or into the rural. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, they wouldn't call it a compound. I think they probably call it a training center. I mean, well, basically, sure. as sorry. these health promoters, well, I mean, it's, it is it is <laughs> in terms of safety, I mean, right. it is a safe place to be. But that's the place that they bring in these health promoters from all these different places and come and they do training with them and then send them back home. Yes. One thing else I would just mention is that one of our goals as the mission ministry is for, to help everyone in the congregation find their role in missions. So some, some will do food pantries, some will make 
you know, help with the uh, uh, link and something else. But some people have their focus more on international. And so we wanted, we thought that was an important other avenue is that everyone needs to find their role for how they're doing service and mission work. So this was another opportunity we thought was important. Very similar to what the green team has done with, or the purple team or the blue team. I mean, they're all the different color teams that they have, and they've done a marvelous job about if you want to do, you know, you can help plant pollinator plants. If you want to learn, there's a book club. If you want to um, do something else, there's, you know, being able to do the runs and, and some of the hikes and some of the bicycle rides. So mm -hmm. our goal really was to emulate what they have done and to be able to say, there's a lot of different ways you can participate in mission work. And you don't have to travel internationally to yeah. do so. You don't have to go down and stand and serve link if you don't want to, but there are ways that you can participate in, in a lot of different frameworks. Well, and hopefully as this relationship grows, we'll have more of that. We'll know more of what kind of participation and what kind of support we need other than prayer support always. And obviously the financial, and, but um, but there's a, there'll be a lot of doing type stuff. So, but I don't know what that's supposed to look like yet. But we want to know what you want to see. What do you want to see out of this relationship? Where do you think it should be going? And what do we need to learn and give both? Well, in regards to uh, supporting um, Christy, you said, so we, we have a designated amount um for the next two years or three years but what um and then you said you would continue that has there been thoughts about where those funds would come from after we've spent the whys or is that something that we'll review in a couple of years or is it the idea that hey once we get rid of the mortgage there's some funds that we can kind of put into a pot or all once of we get rid of the mortgage a lot's gonna happen yeah <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I, I think that's the thing we yeah. want to show is that let's let's spend the next two or three years really thinking about how we can show what we can do if we do have the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, some of it will be fundraisers, yeah. right? Especially going between the next three years, huh, next five next years, years till yeah. the mortgage is paid off, um, and then whether we allocate. A little bit of that budget or not that's up to the congregation and slt and all that kind of stuff but um so it will be fundraisers and just regular giving to help support because we'd like to be able to support their annual project whatever that is every year it's different um and as long as christy is still there i mean i think that we should help support her too because that's through the i am uh, international ministries which is I think, are they Baptist related? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> I've only yeah, known Baptist people in there, so. <laughs> I don't, yeah, they changed say. their name, so Baptist isn't in there. Right. They changed, that way they can raise funds with folks that are Baptist. Right. But it's the it's the foreign mission arm of the American Baptist Church of the U.S. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. I just didn't verify that. Right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, being able to continuously <laughs> support her, you know, because I have to raise all their funds. Their whole annual salary they have to raise, and so it'd be nice to be able to help her a little bit in support of that too. Yes. Glenda, Glenda and I support Christy and Lynn. Do it. Glenda and I support Christy and Lynn. Oh well, good. Good. I'm glad. Thank you. Yes. Now, I still support people in in Katie too, but just because. I just, that was a relationship we created, and so. So um, I wanted to just add, and I don't think there's an easy answer to this, but um, I'm always really interested in how do you measure the outcomes and the impact, and then how do you um, package that data to, to, to demonstrate um, to the congregation what's been accomplished 
And so I think that's going to be a tough part of it. But I think it's important. I, I think I, that's why we want another reason we like Donald's is because they're doing that now. I mean, yeah. the whole idea that you can go into their annual report and you can see everybody. Yeah, where it goes, how, uh, you know, and <clears throat> the impact that it's making in the community that they serve is right. amazing. I'm so sure that's, that's one thing true. we need to learn from them. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. that's very true. Um, but I think we need to take it one step further and say, okay, what part of that did we, what part of that impact did we play? And how, how do we really put numbers and uh, qualitative? I agree. Well, and some of the things, yeah. I mean, it, it, and I'm just, because we don't know what everything is going to be, mm -hmm. but if yeah. we're doing training here to help more people be involved in late and in the food, yeah, the food pantry That's and uh, family promise and stuff like that, we do extra little training. I mean, those are numbers right. that we can quantify that right. this amount of people, in addition to who are currently working with those, have have shown interest in have taken the training and are now helping with those projects we so that's, that curriculum that's a little bit i mean i mean there's a lot you involved teach us how to do that yeah a lot of what i guess with that <laughs> <laughs> well yeah actually <laughs> yeah good. i think the yeah the data is i think it's going to be important mm -hmm. well and it helps mm -hmm. That data helps keep people interested, right? That's exactly. and enthusiastic, and because once you start donating, and then you never hear any of the yeah. progress or the excitement, or you know, all you hear about is maybe this little fundraiser or that little fundraiser, you kind of start losing interest. So that data yeah. will help. Yeah, it really interested. makes it real. It makes it credible. It um, allows people to continue to be committed to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we we really didn't want to do is start some kind of brand new initiative because mm -hmm. there are yeah. so many things, and so we're not a huge congregation, you know, right. and so we want everyone involved. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, there's a lot of other things going on in this church, mm -hmm. and so we need to have a strong organization with great infrastructure to be able to help us with that. And so I'm yeah. really curious about how they do all of this data collection and how they are, they package it so well. And we do have a couple of, of things up here that we would really encourage you to look at in terms of resources as you go home. And, you know, you have a little bit of time, just go on the website, if nothing else, because it's, first of all, you spend hours on it. It's really wonderful. It really is. And they've done a nice job of being able to uh, communicate to people what the needs are and how they're being met. Yeah. And they may be able to say on our behalf, this is what we accomplished through First Baptist. You're Christ. right. Well, the, the, yeah. the money we had donated um, in 2020 from the trip that we were supposed to have taken, <laughs> to which we didn't. Thank goodness we hadn't bought the plane tickets yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so we that was ten thousand dollars that we donated to Amos directly, and they used that for COVID relief. Um, that was a huge, a huge help um, for their COVID relief because you know, yeah. they couldn't have anybody in to help, and so that allowed them to purchase <laughs> all kinds of stuff for the communities and the rural communities and extra help and extra people that learn how to go out to those communities and help with the COVID relief. So, um, and so I think it's, part of the answer to what you're raising here is the communication. That's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, yeah. how, how do we communicate? And to the we're doing, a, we're yeah. doing a good job right here communicating. Yeah. And so pass off to the committee or the team there. But um, most churches do a lot of things and you know, forgive me if I say from my experience. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> you have, you have a, a lot, lot of, of things <laughs> without measuring what's going on. And so they go on and on and on, and maybe they have some value, and maybe they don't. And so that's a, an important concept to totally agree. figure out how do we measure. And that's hard to do because it's a spiritual kind of thing. Uh, it's not well always measurable. 
Yeah. No, but I, I think the enthusiasm and the amount of people who are involved is a testimony of a measurement um, mm -hmm. of something that mm -hmm. is a positive. Well, I like the idea of, you know, having um, uh, measurement type goals or um, accomplishments that we can communicate verbally uh, in written form or in, you know, a, a presentation, you know. Um, to the to our congregation at large because I think that really will bring it to the forefront, whereas mm -hmm. otherwise it might just kind of get lost and yeah. everything well, else is going on. I wouldn't say it would get lost, but it would be stuck in a small group like this rather than within the whole congregation. Yeah, but I'm just thinking how the congregation looks. It's right. right what's going on well that'll you know obviously there'll need to be reports and you know little blips in the newsletters on a regular basis of what's happening and who's doing what and you know just random information about things that are going on in nicaragua and you know those kind of things so and those are all things that we need help with not just the missions team or just me um, and that's the other thing is we'd like to have a team of people that's looking at all that data, that's looking at all that information and how to get it out there, that's looking at what things we can do to partner with Amos that, you know, where the, where the avenue is going back and forth, not just a one way. We don't want it to be, we're just going down there every three years to do a mission trip. We want it to be a, an avenue where we're helping them and they're helping us. Um, well, and that's why with partnership mm -hmm. as opposed to just saying we're going down on a mission trip. We really okay. don't want to just be that's just the mission trip. That's a that's that's small piece. piece that we want this to be a partnership. Mm -hmm. well, I'm sorry. It's, it's a small thing, but like the family promise, I'll share some of the things that they post on our social mm -hmm. media. Right. And so, you know. We could be more conscious about doing that for Amos's stuff as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great point. Yeah. And so and after this, we're going to give you our PowerPoint presentation. We're going to have you posted <laughs> on the web. Yeah. We report it. We can report, and we have a yeah. report. But it, but again, it's it's a partnership. And so why why I do like the idea of, of metrics and data. We need to do make sure that this is a relationship, right? And so yeah. knowing the names of not just. Christina works there, but other members of Amos, like this is Charlie, he does this, this is so she's been doing this, and, and the people who were who, who they help, right, and the actual villages and the names of the villages and the mm -hmm. names of the villagers. Yeah. Um, That's the and so the, and the names of those. So, so it's not just this yeah. uh, You're right. quantitative data, but this right. qualitative information There's um, and communication. Some, somebody who is behind all of the data. There, there are people Absolutely. behind yeah. the data. Yeah. And to right. be able to right. profile some of those people is right. important. Right. I mean, we, we talked about, right, yeah. the, we, we talked about this 90% survival rate. It's like, great, but what does that mean? Like, here are those people, yeah. right? <clears throat> well, something as powerful really is telling a story of a child or a group of children or a community of people and yeah. what meant to them. Yeah, and there's a level of privacy that you still have, you also have to be cognizant right. of and aware of. Like the some of that information that we share within our congregation probably doesn't go out, you know. I mean right. And with that relationship <clears throat> and communication <throat> with the director and with Christy and what's his name? David. Yeah. Paramount. Yeah, Paramount. yeah. Paramount. You know, uh, those kind of people we can get those stories. Um, personally, if they're not posted on their Facebook or on their, I mean, Facebook or their website or their YouTube video, I mean, there's lots and lots and lots of stories. And so those are, they're more than willing to share those stories that we can use um, as well. And so, but as that relationship starts to build and we become, you know, trustworthy to each other um, to share some of that kind of information. You know, it's just lots and lots of little things that we can be doing in this relationship. I mean, it's endless. Yeah. And to have Christy be here with us or others yeah. is mm -hmm. important. I think, yeah, well. we're hoping so we to have... be able to do that once yeah. a year is to have her come here uh, and talk with us once a year. 
Well, and I, I even push it another level past that. I think you're absolutely right about the, 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 the data point. And, and maybe what we can do is maybe even be learners before we have our strategy, right? Because very often churches will say, well, we're going to do this, we're going to do this date, and this many people are coming, and this is what we want to do. And if you can have beds that feel like this, and, you know, we have our list of demands almost. But what if instead we said, what are the best practices? Who, what are, who are the five best churches that you have had the best partnerships with, the best relationships with, right? Go use the data that's out there now for us to be learners to say how – how can we do what you need us to do right. as opposed to here's our list of things that we want to do? Um, maybe then they, they it blows our minds and they say, well, actually, yeah, we don't want you to go down there. We want you to bring five of our people up to the States and do this. Or we want you to stay where you are and raise funds and send us money. Or we want you to, who we don't know, right? And so I think potentially we can do both and begin as learners yeah. with the data do the practice and <laughs> share the data, right? So it becomes a, a, a feedback loop. Um, there's a, a great book called Lean Impact, written by Anna Mae Chang, who's a friend of mine, actually. And um, she says in there that to be truly effective, you have to love the problem, not your solution. So well, being, I like that. being willing <laughs> to test, test what we're doing, and then if it doesn't work, being willing to admit it and then pivot to something else. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, I love that. It's just a great quote, I think. Yeah. I love that. Yes. Uh, is there wireless communication short of satellite? While I'm there? Well, While we're there? Or famous for the whole, yeah. Um, I, I don't know those kind of little details. I, we start, I miss the first uh, phone conversation with the 12 people that are going. Um, Probably I, in Managua, but yeah, I, I would I doubt it once you're In Managua, that. we would have that, but out well, in. I'm concerned, how, how does a rural setting communicate that we have somebody with a dominant thing? And they someone's... bring them back in, they walk to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Or they have little cars, or they take one of us on the trip or something. Oh, you know, anybody. Anybody. yeah, anybody. in the yeah. communities, yeah. You should really watch some of their videos. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. profound because um, they always have health people in every community, and so sometimes they're carrying you, you know, twenty miles to the nearest facility in a uh, in a sling. You know, it's oh. got. Oh, I saw that video. You know the. Yeah. Yeah. Rods of the, what do I want to say, tree limbs and the yeah. fabric in there, and they're carrying down. Or... If you've got the equivalent of a halfway decently trained paramedic, paramedic can say, This patient's got a surgical belly, and we need to let people go and no wrong way. And well, they don't do that. They don't, they don't do let that. you know they're on their way. <laughs> no. They don't have the ability to necessarily do that. Now, yeah. I don't know, some of those you know, locations may have some cell service where they can call or if somebody happens to have a cell phone. I mean, or satellite phone. Uh, I mean, I don't yeah. think they yeah. have cell phones. I, I know in yeah. Haiti they had cell phones. I mean, everybody did, as long as you were in the city. But if you were outside the city, yeah. well, you didn't yeah. have any service. And I would assume that it's going to be similar okay. in Nicaragua to that. Mm -hmm. So, no, you don't have the pre-warning that somebody's coming into the hospital. They just walk in. Um, and that's, you know, they have to teach and all there. And there's lots of um, doctors across borders and stuff like that that go to places like that all the time. Ask them if they can use a, uh, a well-used surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> probably. They probably could. Because I know that doctors across borders go down yeah. there. I mean, they go all over the place, but I mean, my... Mm -hmm. My internal doctor does goes to several different places so throughout the year. So you know, and those are more of scheduled surgeries of things that might need to be done that aren't emergency. But I'd also like you to push us. Do you have concerns? Do you have, or do you want to instead of asking a question, give us a a statement of guidance, or we need to hear your concerns as well. 
and he this is biting off a big deal and and we recognize that and we want to make sure we go in with eyes wide open so if you have experience or thoughts we'd like to hear anything like that yes i think biting off a big project is energizing mm -hmm. for a lot of people and i wouldn't let that be a, a, a hindrance mm -hmm. That's right word. I have so, an image. Excuse me. Go, go ahead. ahead. This, I, I think it's great. No, I, I'm developing an image of uh, that this is a pioneering effort and that we are pioneers of faith. And that, uh, if you forgive me, Deva, that you're the chief scout. Yeah. I need a co partner. I need a co partner. No, seriously, you're you're the person going out to find out, bring back information to us, like the chief scouts on the, on the pioneer trails. I the pioneer think there's trails. still one slot open if somebody wants to come with me. <laughs> well, let me speak on behalf of the the committee and, and echo that. Basically, I think you know, you know all Steve said a little bit about what the missions committee has done. That's a lot of things. This the missions committee cannot become the Nicaragua Partnership Committee. Mm -hmm. There, we need to kind of create this second thing, which will have you know significant connections with uh, the missions team. But the missions team is also going to be looking at other priorities down the road, and so the, they need to kind of birth this thing. Deva has agreed to, to be one of the one of the scouts, uh, but yeah, we do. We need another. It'd be great to have a co leader with her. Um, perhaps somebody out of this meeting or somebody that you know you you know of that may be called or, or interested in this, and then a, a small team that can continually do this work to say, okay, what does this look like next? And then kind of read and react and, and move toward partnership in connection with what missions is doing, in connection with the SLT, in connection to a group like this and the whole congregation. So yeah, we need to recruit some folks. And you don't have to let us know today, but it sure would be nice if we could know pretty soon because we really are getting deep into the middle of this now. And once David goes and comes back, it's it's going to be pretty much. Um, yeah, you'll have another whole story. Yeah, we'll have a whole other <laughs> That's right. experiences and people right. and, yeah. and ideas of ways we can help and. In some ways, whatever. I feel like we're birthing this thing. I mean, look at the average age in the room here. We're birthing this though for a generation or two younger than us. Yes. And mm -hmm. we have to get it started here. Mm -hmm. But this is something that, you know, I'll just confess one of the reasons why I'm at this church is because the first Sunday I showed up here, the prayer was like today. It was about an international focus. We weren't just us. It wasn't a prayer about us. It was a prayer about the world. And I have this hunch that if word gets out that this first Baptist crazy congregation is more than just that little building over there, that they care about the world, and that who knows might darken the door. People, you know, like me and others who are inspired by the fact that these people think big. Yeah. I've been in this church for. I don't know, since 1970. I don't know how many years that is. Um, I've grown up here. All of you. <laughs> it's four and a half when we moved here. Um, so there you go. Now you know how old I am. Um, but this church has always been a mission oriented church, as long as I can remember. I mean, even when I was in youth group and stuff like that. Um, but for years, we, with the youth groups and all in the 2000s, up to 2000s, um, you know, every other year they did a mission trip. You know, the other years were just a camp of some sort, but most of those camps have some kind of a mission element to them anyway. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we've done other mission trips, I mean, to Bethel and just lots of other ones. Um, Crosswind, we've done mission trips out there where we've gone to help get, you know, camps set up and ready to go for the summer and um, just lots of different things. And of course, our local missions that we've had with, with lots of them. So I think, you know, missions is just a, a part of who we are. 
I come from a long line of missionaries. My grandparents and my great grandparents were missionaries over in China. So my cousins and your blood. all that kind of stuff. So it's in my blood and I really enjoy international mission, but I'm not willing to move. <laughs> and be there permanently. So I have these little story. things that run around me all the time that keep me here. Little kiddos. Yeah, the little kiddos. So, um, but I really enjoy being a part of that um, in some level. And I think that this relationship will kind of enhance that for me and not be just this 10 day trip that I take every few years. Um, it'll be more of a international component that I don't have to leave for on a regular basis. Other thoughts, so Wednesday, here. <laughs> that you have for us? It's been excellent, very, very helpful. Well, the, the kind of mission you're thinking of is where we reach at our hands and it makes a long line of yeah. people reaching out their hands mm -hmm. and that's all the way to, you know, wherever, wherever we're going. And back. Right. Yeah. Thank you all for coming very much. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thanks for supporting me. Back. Yeah. For this trip. You're welcome. Yes. It's it awesome. It really is. Good. Good. And thank you, Jim and Melissa, Melissa for joining us. Thank you. All right. Do you have any questions or wisdom for us? No, I'm more, I'm kind of just information gathering at this point. Just, you know. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. I was kind of involved in the planning of the last one to some extent. So, good deal. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Appreciate Thank you very it. much. And, uh, please go back to the back. There are probably <laughs> still cookies left, and I'm not taking them home. <laughs> so, please. And I have containers if y'all need them. I'll take them home.